Dear students of second BA, let us now study the first play in your textbook titled The Boo by Anton Chekhov. This is a Russian play written by a Russian dramatist called Chekhov. The characters in the play are Helena Ivanovna Popov. She is a widow, a young widow. She is a mistress of a country estate. Country estate, estate in a countryside or village. So she is managing or she is the owner of a country estate. The second character is Grigory Stepanovich Smanov. Smanov is the proprietor of a country estate. So both the major characters are the owners of estates. Helena Popov has an estate, country estate. So has Smanov. He is a manager. Smanov is a manager of a country estate just like Helena Popov. The next character is Luca. Luca is a servant of Mrs. Popov. Then some minor characters are also seen here. They are a gardener, a man who is taking care of the garden. Then you find a coachman. Coachman is the man who drives the cart, gadi. Then several workers are also seen here, workmen. Time is the present. So that means the play is taking place in the present. When the curtain rises, you see a well-furnished, beautifully furnished reception room in Mrs. Popov's home. So, when the play begins, we are shown Mrs. Popov's home. And we are taken to the reception room in the house that belongs to Mrs. Popov. Mrs. Popov is discovered in deep mourning. Discovered means seen, found. We see her in deep mourning in her reception room. Mrs. Popov is discovered in deep mourning. That means she is expressing sorrow, great sorrow over the death of somebody. She is sitting up on a sofa in the reception room, gazing, gazing, looking very firmly, staring, okay, staring, steadfastly, steadfastly, firmly, without taking the eyes off. Gazing steadfastly, what she is staring at? She is gazing or she is looking at a photograph. Luca is also present. So when the scene begins, when the play begins, we see Mrs. Popov sitting in deep mourning. The servant Luca is also seen beside her. Now Luca is seen, is heard talking to the mistress Popov. Luca says, ma'am, who is ma'am here? Is addressed as ma'am here, Popov, who is in deep mourning. So the servant is telling ma'am, Popov, ma'am, this is not right. What you are doing is not right. You are wearing yourself out. That means you are spoiling your life. You are wearing yourself out. You are tiring yourself. You're punishing yourself. You're wasting your precious life. So Luca, the servant, is telling Madam Popov that she is committing a grave mistake. What's a grave mistake here? She's wearing herself out. She is not enjoying her life. She is inflicting pain on herself. How is she doing it? The maid and the cook have gone looking for berries. Now, 
Luca, the servant, tells Madame Popov that look at the maid in the house, look at the cook, both the maid and the cook have gone out looking for fruits, berries, strawberries or gooseberries. They are not at home, they are gone out. So now everybody is busy enjoying himself or herself. Everything in nature breathes, that breathes is enjoying life, not just the people. Even nature, plants, animals, creatures, everybody, everything is enjoying himself or itself. So at this time, when the entire world is enjoying itself, ma'am, why are you sitting here and spoiling or wasting your life? That's what the servant is telling her. Even the cat knows how to be happy. Look at this. The maid is enjoying. The cook is enjoying. How are they enjoying? They are going around searching for, looking for berries to be eaten. Everything that breathes, that means everything that has got a life is enjoying. A plant is enjoying, a tree is enjoying, an ant is enjoying, a worm is enjoying, a mosquito is enjoying, a butterfly is enjoying, a cow is enjoying, an elephant is enjoying. So everything that has got life that breathes is enjoying. So look at the cat in the house. Even the cat knows how to be happy. It sleeps about the courtyard and catches birds. Even the cat, look at the cat. What does the cat do? The cat goes around and catches birds. It enjoys itself by catching birds. But Look at yourself. Ma'am, what are you doing? You are hiding yourself in the house, within the house, sitting on the sofa here in the reception room as though you were in a cloister, cloister ashrama, a monastery. Luca is telling the lady, Madam Popov, that Everything, everyone in this world except her is enjoying. But she is sitting inside the house as though she were locked up in, imprisoned in an ashrama, a cloister. You don't seem to be enjoying yourself. You seem to be imprisoned or jailed in a cloister. Now, a sannyasi lives within a cloister. A nun lives within a cloister without going outside, without bothering about the external world and you too are behaving in the same way, ma'am. When everything is enjoying itself, when everybody is enjoying itself, how can you see you are not a you are not a saint you are not a nun then how can you be imprisoned within the four walls of this room yes truly by actual reckoning reckoning here account calculation by actual calculation let me tell you, you haven't left this house for a whole year so let me tell you very clearly that ma'am, to be precise, you haven't gone out of this house for the last one year. I have the account. I have made the calculation. So now, you haven't gone out of this house for almost a year. Why are you doing it? So what is Luca? What is Luca's charge against ma'am? Madam Popov is inside the house, lives inside the house as if she were jailed in the house. 
as if she were put within a cloister. When everybody is enjoying life outside, she is sitting just like a prisoner within the house. And what is she doing? Sitting in the reception room, she is mourning over the death of somebody. Now Mrs. Popo replies, and what does she say? I shall never leave it. Why should I? She tells Luca, look, I will never leave this house. Why should I? I won't go out of this house. My life is over. You know why I am sitting like this? Like a nun. Because my life is over. He lies in his grave. Who is he? The man who is dead. So that means, that shows that, uh, Mrs. Popov is mourning over the death of a man. So that man is addressed as he here. He lies in his grave. Look at that man. Think about him. He is in his grave. I have buried, I have buried myself within these four walls of my house. I have buried. He is buried in the grave. The man is buried in the grave. I am buried within this room. I have buried myself. Oh, I am buried. Buried here, hidden. Put within the four walls of this house. He is buried in the grave. I am buried within this room. Both of us are dead. My life is over. We are both dead. He is in the grave. I am in this room. So what does it mean? Mrs. Popov doesn't want to enjoy her life because her beloved is dead. And she considers herself as a dead because she has lost her partner. So she is very, very faithful to her beloved. So after he died, she does not feel like enjoying her life. So she is a very, very loyal friend, a loyal wife, faithful wife to the husband. Now Lucas says, there we are again, come on, you are saying the same thing again and again. So whenever I tell you about the happiness in life, you tell me the same thing. What do you tell me? You tell me that you are dead. Just like your beloved. Just like your husband who is buried in the grave. You are saying it again. It is too terrible, awful, terrible to listen to it. So it is. So when you tell me that, when I listen to what you say, come on, I get angry. It is terrible. It is very bad. So what you are saying is absurd. Nikolai Mikhailovich, oh, Nikolai Mikhailovich is a man who is dead. So she is, Mrs. Popov is mourning over the death of Nikolai Mikhailovich, her husband, beloved. I know he is dead. It was a will of the Lord. Lord here? Yeah? God. So that was God's will. A man dies because God wants him to go away from this earth. That's a will of God. So tomorrow anyone else may die. You may die. I may die. That's a will of God. So we can't do anything about it. And the Lord has given him, given whom? Your husband, your beloved, Nikolai Mikhailovich, eternal peace. Now he is enjoying Eternal peace because it's dead. You have greed over it. I know after he died, you have expressed sorrow. You have grieved over it. And that should be enough. How long will you keep crying over the man who is dead? You have grieved enough. You have spent almost a year mourning over his death. That is more than enough. Now it is time to stop. Stop what? Now it is time to stop crying, mourning, expressing grief or sorrow 
one can weep and wear mourning forever so will anybody wear weep or wear mourning for 100 years 50 years 10 years 5 years no you're done for a year that's enough stop it so look at me let me talk about myself my wife died so luka says my wife died a few years ago i grieved for her when she died when i lost my wife surely i grieved i wept i cried but i wept a whole month i wept almost for a month then it was over then i stopped then i bounced back to life that's what you should do but you you have been mourning for almost a year that is nonsense that is absurd must one be forever sing lamentations what are lamentations here sad songs crying elegies crying elegies singing elegies must one be forever shedding tears singing no sad songs will you keep on shedding your tears for that dead husband for more than a year that would be more than your husband was worth don't feel bad let me tell you one thing your husband doesn't deserve so much of love because your husband was not such a great man who deserved this kind of mourning a mourning what kind of mourning a mourning that lasted almost a year and he doesn't deserve indirectly luka is saying that he was not such a great man and he sighs he takes a deep breath he sighs and says you have forgotten all your neighbors ma'am think about your life you haven't gone out of this house for more than a year meanwhile you've forgotten who your neighbors are you don't talk to your neighbors you don't come outside you don't go out and you receive no one you don't have any visitors here if somebody comes your house you don't open the door it's bad you will leave you will pardon me like the spiders ma'am let me tell you don't get angry with me when i am telling you the naked truth ma'am you are living just like the spiders within a room if you keep a room closed for a long time what will happen spiders will enjoy living there in the same way you are living inside this room just like a spider and the good light of the day we never see spiders hate the sun spiders love to live in a dark room so are you come on you are a human being you are not a spider you are not a creature you have not seen the good light of the day for almost a year all the livery livery dress ma'am you have got nice clothes dresses you haven't worn those dresses for more than a year and your livery dress is eaten by rats and mice as though there weren't any more nice people in the world come on let me tell you your livery is eaten your dress is eaten by mice and rats and your mourning as a sea there are in any better people than your husband in this world ma'am open your eyes come out you will see much much better people than your husband who is dead but the whole neighborhood is for a gentle folk look at your neighbor neighbors think of your neighborhood think about the people who are living in this area most of them almost everybody in this neighborhood in this locality is decent everybody is a decent they are gentle people gentle folk decent dignified men and women the regiment 
the regiment here a unit of army is stationed in riblov riblov is a place nearby and they are the army station so many soldiers have come and station in riblov and the officers the army officers are very very handsome to look at ma'am near in our locality there is a army unit and there are so many soldiers army officers who are stationed here who are living in our locality they are simply beautiful to look at and you don't get a chance to have a look at them because you are inside you never come out one can't see enough of them one can't see enough of them means you won't be satisfied by having just a look at them you feel like looking at them every day again and again because they are very handsome they are very attractive to look at every friday there is a ball ball means here dance party a dance party every day every friday there is a ball and military music is also conducted organized so in the army in the regiment every friday there is a dance party and you can hear the military music as well oh my dear dear ma'am you are very young and you are pretty and if you would only let your spirits live that means i request you to remove your morning clothes okay you are in your morning clothes and you look very dull and you shed tears thinking about your husband i request you to change your dress wear something pretty and i love your spirits to rise high i hope you will do that beauty can't last for ever ma'am this is a time for you to enjoy because you are very young after 30 or 40 years you can't enjoy your life because by then you will have become old so this is a right time to enjoy and your beauty doesn't last for ever come out this is a right time don't waste your life don't tire yourself out please come out come out look at nature look at the people around look at the beautiful handsome army officers over there in riblo when 10 short years are over let me tell you after 10 years you'll be glad enough to go out and meet the officers then it'll be too late say after 10 years now you are in morning you don't feel like going out but if at all you feel like going out after 10 years then then will be too late for you by then you will have become very old you won't be in a position to enjoy your life enjoy your time with the handsome army officers ma'am this is the time to enjoy so please come out don't waste your don't waste your life don't tie yourself out just because your husband is dead you are young you are still young and you have got a long way to go ma'am please come out forget about your dead husband just say goodbye to him and come out